If you've ever had Nigerian food, you know that we do not joke with our vegetables at all. In this episode, I'm going to be talking about what I refer to as my four musketeers of Nigerian vegetables. My four musketeers of vegetables include ugu, ugu leaves, which is also called pumpkin leaves. And this is bitter leaf, which in Yoruba we call a wuro. This is um, ewedu, which is also called jute leaves or saliot leaves. And this is ephirin, the famous scent leaf or clove basil. Ugu has a sharp, distinct taste. It's my personal favorite of, of all the vegetables. I like it because it packs a lot of nutrients. It's very rich in vitamin A, vitamin C. It's also high in calcium. A lot of people advise that uh, women use it before and after their menstrual cycle because it relieves the pain. It's high in iron, which is good for blood production. It's also recommended for pregnant women because of this. Um, it has very fantastic antibacterial effects. So we need to eat a lot more of ugu, and I know that people already do because they include it in uh, their yam porridge, sometimes in their beans, and there are lots of ways that you can use it. We even use it in eforiro. Edikai kong is also made from ugu leaves, from pumpkin leaves. If you mix it with uh, water leaf, you, make, you get your edikai kong. Uh, for a furry roll, it can be mixed with either shop, it can even be cooked on its own with all your uh, meats and fish and all kinds of things. It's my, it's pers my own personal favorite. I just love ugu leaves. A wuro is distinctively bitter. Even by just touching it, you get the bitter taste on your fingers. So to use a wuro, you, you have to wash it a few times under water, sometimes in a bowl, sometimes under running water. Just try to wash it as much times as possible. You can taste the leaves when you're washing to just see if you know the bitterness has gone out and if you need to keep washing. Um, people advise that nursing mothers eat a lot of a wuro. Now this is because it helps to increase uh, breast milk. Bitter leaf is very good because it's high in a lot of vitamins. It's high in vitamin A, it's high in vitamin C, vitamin E. Ewuro is used to cook uh, the popular ofionubu, which is bitter leaf soup. Um, some people also blend this. Brave people actually blend this and drink it as a green juice. It also aids your metabolism. So for people watching the weight, it's very good for weight management. You need to get a lot of this into your meal. Next is ephirin, which is popularly called scent leaf. It's also called clove basil. Um, ephirin has a citrusy, slightly bitter taste. It has a sweet scent. When you smell ephirin, it has a, a sort of sweet scent to it. Ephraim is also very high in iron, so it's good for the production of red blood cells. It's also used by some people to treat piles. If you mix it with bitter leaf, it's very good in treating piles. Um, it also helps to eradicate the causes of fatigue. So if you're someone that feels tired a lot, you need to start incorporating Ephraim in a lot of the things that you cook. Now, I personally use Ephraim to flavor my fish sauce. It's, it's mostly used as a flavoring agent. You can use Ephraim to flavor Almost anything really, if you get the taste of it, you know, you sort of know what dishes you can, you know, flavor with it. I use it in my fish sauce. Uh, people generally use it in pepper soup. Um, some people even make it as a soup. Uh, in black soup from Edo State, people incorporate this with other leaves and make it into a soup. Next, we have Iwedu, which is also called jute leaves or saliot leaves. Iwedu is very slippery when blended, which is the way that Yorubas eat it. We wash it, blend it, and cook it, and you find that it's, it's, uh, it's slightly slippery, which is what we're interested in in the West because it needs, we, we need that draw to mix with our begiri to enjoy amala. And the reason a lot of us like Ewedo is because, again, it packs a lot of nutrients, fantastic nutrients. It's a high source of fiber, so people that are watching the weights, you know, this is very, very good for weight management. It's high in vitamin A, vitamin C, and vitamin E. Egyptians also eat, they, call, they make a, a soup called moke. I've actually had it at my friend. One friend I went to high school with, she was half Egyptian and half uh, Nigerian. Her mom used to make Ewedo into a soup that they call mokea and we had it with rice and I thought it was absolutely delicious. I don't know if you can tell but I've sort of been sniffing all morning. Um, if I was to choose one of this for, uh, for my cold, I would make something with pumpkin leaves with ugo. I'll make uh, maybe a quick a four euro and just have with rice or with something. But that aside, um, the reason that these vegetables are very important to me is because 
um, they pack a lot of nutrients, loads and loads and loads of nutrients in them. They're widely available. You can find them pretty much anywhere in Nigeria. In fact, Ephraim sometimes grows. In my mom's garden, for instance, Ephraim just grows. She says she's never planted them and we just find them loads and loads of them. They're not, the leaves are not this big, but at least it's Ephraim where we still get to cook with them. Sometimes we even get a way do with just the one or two sticks, you know, growing here and there. Um, they're just almost everywhere. You can get them, of course, in the markets. Um, they're also highly medicinal um, and they're very tasty and taste is very important to me as a cook. So guys, that's it for this episode. Um, give me a thumbs up if you learned something new and share with me what your four musketeers are, um, what vegetables you find in your area and what you do with them. Please leave your comments below in the comment section and subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching. Bookie Tinkle, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Thank you for the seemingly little things, the tips and recipes that make life smoother as we celebrate 50 years. Join us in our journey of creating good food moments. I'm not going to use a lot of oil because canned coconut milk has a lot of oil in it. So when you start to cook in coconut milk, you see the oil starts to come out of the milk and I don't want it too oily, so not a lot of oil. <laughs>